just put it all together so you can actually see what we have. It's a lot easier. So at the bottom we have a baseboard. Then we have a drill or spindle. That needs to be pressed in at, from the top and so it can spin. So we have a, what's called a bearing block. We have a string which is wrapped around the spindle and then we have a bow. And then so with a bearing block you're pressing down with your hand onto the spindle applies the pressure downwards into the base. Then with the other hand you're holding the bow and then by moving the bow backwards and forwards you're spinning the spindle, applying the pressure, spinning the spindle into the wood at the bottom which generates dust and the further you go the harder you press and that creates heat and hopefully you will um, attempt an ember out from the wood. So we have the um, half board. So lots of different combinations of wood can be used. Um, poplar works very well, as does lime. Hazel works well, hazel and hazel works well. Ivy works very well, um, with a variety of spindles, um, such as hazel, willow, ash. Um, Willow works very well as a hard board. Um, so really, um, soft medium, medium softness um, for the, or medium hardness, I should say, for the hard board is preferred. Um, with a slightly harder spindle, um, hazel is one of my preferred woods for spindle because hazel generally tends to grow straight, and in the diameter I prefer, which is about 15 millimeters and you can find a lot of dead standing hazel around so um, that's why I prefer hazel. The willow works well, willow and willow um, but yeah personally hazel is my favourite and because hazel works on a variety of different woods and is readily available for where I live. Um, so going back to the half board and the spindle with the half board um, Width wise, probably not much thinner than that. So that. And the spindle, I prefer 15mm in width. Um, don't like it too short, probably at least sort of that height. Um, you know, you can go up to about that sort of height. The longer it is, um, it can be um, easier with the posture. Um, so more comfortable when it gets shorter it can get a bit trickier also if you have it too long you can't uh, put enough um, pressure on so you know about 25 centimeters is a nice height but whatever works for you Can use a variety of things for a bearing block. A uh, bearing block wants to be hard and sort of polished so that there's um, not much friction at the top and it's all the friction at the bottom. So I use a nice stone like that which presses on the top so there's no friction and you can give it a lot of pressure. Or you could use a limpet shell which is a favourite amongst a lot of people. Again it's polished but you, you do need to have something on top because the that shell can get very hot and burn your hand. Again, that's um, very soft. You can you can use a very hard wood as well. Um, so put on top. And this is holly, so you can black form, hawthorn, 
horn beam is something really, you know, really hard wood will work well, which polishes. Um, and if you can't find anything else, use an egg cup or a shot glass. They use it. They work well, surprisingly. Bear with cord. So I won't talk about artificial cordage such as normal starter cord because I don't use it. Um, I prefer to use natural cord um, because it's natural and if you're going to use something artificial then I could say you may as well always use it like that. Controversial. Anyway, so I prefer to use natural cordage. Um, so I either use shop bought cordage um, or I'll use my own homemade cordage such as using metals. So with a bow, two main types of bow I use, either a solid bow, which you can't bend, which is fairly straight, um, or a flexible bow. So with a solid bow, I will generally use two or three twists. Um, unlike a lot of people who only use one, I prefer using two or three because there's less chance of slippage. Um, so you can see it's tight, the spindle's tight against the boat. Um, I find this a lot um, more effective than using a, you know, a, a solid bendy bow. Um, so it's easier to to use, I find, and. Yeah, and because the um, spindle's on the outside, um, you don't need a big bendy bow. So, the other type of bow is a flexible bow. So, flexible bow does have its advantage with um, cordage which can stretch, such as natural cordage, especially homemade cordage. So, see here, I've got one twist. I can't get another twist. So I use a flex of the bow, bend the bow, get slack, that over, let go, and it's tightened. So, because it's flexible, this stretches, the, um, the bow will flex with it, so to keep it tight, um, which is great, because it means you don't have to keep um, altering the, um, the cord on the bow. So that's why I like to use a flexible bow. So, uh, the other thing I haven't mentioned is a um, ember tray to catch the dust um, from half board. So, I've got a piece of leather here, so dust will fall onto that. You can use a leaf. You want it to be dry though, not wet. There's a variety of things you can use um, of this. I'm going to use oak on oak, which is not a common um, wood choice. Um, <coughs> I use oak, so oak was traditionally used within ritual, apparently, um, within the Celtic tradition. Um, so, it's one of the reasons why I use, like using oak on oak, and it does work quite well. You just need to give it a lot of pressure. Um, so I'm using oak on oak with a stone bearing block, metal cordage and a flexible bow. So, so this foot, left foot, I'm going to put my left foot on the um, half board to secure it. Now I've got the um, spindle in my left hand, cord in my right, one twist. Then using the flexible bow, I'm going to put in another twist like that, holding that, and holding that with my right hand, that, now pick up the bearing block, put the um, spindle in the socket, put the bearing block on the top, so I've got my foot quite close to the spindle, I've got my left arm that's locked around my leg, that is the bearing block secure in there, holding that in place. So and then I'm gonna pull push and pull. Right, 
Right, that um, bow wasn't strong enough and it snapped. So when using a flexible bow, it, it does need to be um, fairly strong and um, that when you flex it, it's not going to snap. So we will need to use a solid bow. So it gets three twists in. See that cord is very tight. So tight cord helps. Um, pressure, down pressure actually. So right there. So, we've done it and just in time because my cord's now. So this cord is um, being used a lot, um, quite a lot actually over the last few weeks. So it's finally worn through but we were able to. Here we have the ember teased out from the wood. So this is from oak on oak. Blessed be the ember, blessed be the ancestral fire.